Alright, so this is the second time I'm filming this video because I forgot to turn on the mic. Basically, you guys wanted to see how I edit my 35mm film scans on Lightroom and Photoshop. I'm editing this video right now, but I realized that I'm only showing you guys how I edit on Lightroom. It would have been like a 40 minute video if I showed you everything I do into Photoshop. This is just for Lightroom. If you want to see Photoshop, make sure to comment it down below and like it or something so that I know to make another video about this, just because this is a really big topic. Basically, I just wanted to show you guys my process in editing these scans. I feel like you can develop your own style by following some of these things, maybe tweaking them a little bit more than I'm doing. So by watching this, you'll be able to figure out what fits your style, what you want to show the audience, and hopefully you get something from it. The first thing you want to do is make sure that everything lives in one master project folder. In this case, it's named editing video. This holds your original scans, any initial exports, and then final exports. So as long as you're working from this, you'll never lose the original scan files or misplace any exports. Okay, so in Lightroom, I typically find an image that I think has the most well-rounded exposure and color to edit first. This way, I can copy the settings to others later on. So the first thing that I'm gonna do in this image is just mess with the overall exposure and overall contrast. Sliding the sliders back and forth until you feel it's right is basically the best way to go about it. In this case, it just needed to be a little darker and have a little less contrast. And then I typically tend to pull down the highlights just to have a little bit more detail in them. And I actually pull down the shadows as well. Now that I've been messing with the highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks for so long, I need to go back to the original exposure and contrast and make a couple adjustments. For this image, I think I'm going to make it a little bit brighter and a little bit more contrasty since I brought up the blacks so much. For the whites and the blacks, I actually bring them both up just to balance out the image a little bit more since I've already decreased the contrast and brought down both the highlights and the shadows. And then I'll move on to the clarity slider. So for clarity, I would suggest not using this too much as if you slide it too far to the right, it'll make your image really, really harsh. And if you slide it too much to the left, it'll look incredibly soft and just unrealistic. So the best way to use this is to just add slight softness or slight harshness to your image. I like to do a little bit of softness. So I put it at like negative three to negative seven is my normal range. And then I never use the dehaze tool. Uh, it's, it just doesn't add anything that I want in an image. For the vibrancy, I'll actually add a little bit to this image. I'd rather add vibrancy than saturation for the most part, just because vibrancy isn't the saturation of your whole image. It's only a certain range of tones that usually avoid skin tones. So it's a good way to just increase, you know, the vibrancy of grass or sky or just anything that's not a person's skin. And then I like to add a little bit of saturation I would suggest not adding too much or your image is just gonna look fake. Moving on, I'll crop the image really quick to get rid of any borders that happen during scanning and straighten it if needed. And then I'll start comparing this edited image with the original image. My goal is always to retain as much of the original color tones and exposure from the actual scan. And looking at the before and looking at the after, some people might not be able to tell, I, I, don't, I can tell, so I think that's all that matters. But some people like to edit a, a bit more, so if you want to use these techniques in any direction uh, a little bit farther to stylize for yourself, go for it. Next is tone curve. I don't use tone curves in Lightroom. If you guys want me to make another video about how I use tone curves in Photoshop, I'll definitely do a follow-up video. But I don't use them in Lightroom as I just don't think that they're really accurate. So moving to the HSL sliders instead. The best thing to do here is just play around. Uh, that's the best advice I can give. It took me a little bit of time to realize exactly what I was doing. I typically just try to correct for anything that the film might have gotten wrong. So skin tones fall into that, whites fall into that, blacks fall into that. Uh, anything that you know, film might have messed up is what I'm trying to fix here. Just make it more accurate to what my eye saw in person while shooting the photo. And then lastly, I will add a little bit of sharpening, not too much 
in Lightroom just so that from a TIFF file to a JPEG, we're getting a little bit of uh, natural sharpening from Lightroom. But I will do sharpening in Photoshop later, so keep that in mind. To copy the correct settings, you wanna do anything that's not specific to the photo. So you don't wanna do anything with uh, the white balance because photos white balance usually are different. And then you wanna keep off local adjustments as they're, they're all gonna change for every image you take. And then obviously transform and crop are in the same realm as that. So whatever's on the screen right now is what you wanna synchronize. And that should do a pretty good, pretty good job of uh, synchronizing all the color and exposures just because this was the same day, same shoot, same film, same camera. Uh, when that's the case, you can get lucky with some settings. In this case, for the next photo, uh, it just was a little too bright and I think a little too contrasty. And then I brought up the shadows just a little bit. Um, I like his black jacket. I want the detail to be left in there rather than crushing the shadows, so I'll bring it back up to negative seven. Then I'll just crop the image really quick and check the image for any additional edits that I want to make. I kind of, I think this is pretty accurate with HSL. I think it's pretty accurate with color balance. It could be a little bit warmer, but if I'm gonna do any warming or anything, I actually do that in Photoshop. I don't do it in Lightroom. For the next image, the before and after shows that we already made a lot of progress compared to the original photo. Uh, but it just seems a little bit too bright and a little too contrasty again. So I'm going to take some of the contrast out of this image and then bring up the shadows just a little tiny bit. So this image already looks pretty good uh, for the most part. I definitely want to mess with the curves at some point in Photoshop, but for the overall exposure and uh, contrast for the, for the photo, I don't think I need to make too crazy of changes here. And then the only thing left with this image are that the skin tones and the red jacket are totally off. Uh, in person, this jacket was like cherry red. The jacket is in the red hue and then his skin tone is actually probably in like the orange and yellow. So what I'm going to do is first uh, move the red hue closer to a cherry red is what I remember it looking like. And then move the orange and yellow sliders to correct for his skin tone because he looks a little green. I think he just needs to be a little bit more magenta, a little bit more red as well. So as you can see, as I move the yellow slider more to the left, you can see the difference between his skin tone and the jacket, which were different colors obviously. So it's just about playing with those levels until you can see the separation between his skin tone and the red jacket. And then just because we added some magenta to both of the red and orange and yellow tones, I'm going to go back to the whole image tint and uh, add some green in it by, by giving it a negative four value. Now I'll just go back and check the black levels again, make sure that you know it's nothing's too dark, and check the exposure one more time and then do a before and after comparison. So in this before and after you can see the difference is really great in you know just providing clarity to the original film, but not getting rid of the original tones that are in the film. His skin tone is pretty accurate, his hair is pretty much the same. The green in the back is pretty much the same. The only thing that's really different is the red jacket, which like I said, kind of was not orange at all. So I think that was just the golden light from the sun uh, messing up you know, the color temperatures and the emulsion. Okay, so for the next photo, the sink worked pretty well, as you can see in the before and after. This image didn't really take that much editing. I feel like uh, it already has a lot of character just from the composition that I don't really want to add too much styling to it. What I will do in Photoshop later on is add a vignette to this image so that like it's way more dramatic of him looking through this mirror. Um, but other than that, I, I, I think it looks good in Lightroom. I don't think I need to do that much to it. So then for the next image, it's basically the same thing. I already kind of like what's going on. I was using a flash here, shooting 
you know, into a mirror that was backlit by the sky. So everything's really kind of already punchy and really contrasty in general. So as far as correcting anything in this photo, I'm just making sure that, you know, the exposure's pretty much the same and that the actual temperature is the same as the previous photo since this second photo looks really, really blue compared to the original. So I'll just add a little bit of warmth, add a little bit of magenta, and it should balance it out so that they look like they were shot, you know, with the same camera, with the same settings, etc. Okay, so that's it. Here's the before and after uh, from these scans. Now the only thing left to do is export your images to that master folder so you don't lose anything. For the export settings in Lightroom, it's pretty simple. Just scroll down, make sure the image format is JPEG, make sure the quality is 100, and then export it to your overall master folder. All right, so once you exported everything to a done all folder, this is gonna hold all the images from all the rolls from a shoot. You'll go into that folder and pick the favorites that you have from each roll. In this case, I only picked like four photos or five photos that were uh, my picks. So then I'll go into my picks and just look at them again, look at them really close up, zoom into the photos, move around the images, try different compositions, zoom out, things like that, just to get a feel for what the image is saying, if I like the composition, if I like the style, if I like the tones, just everything. I like to be really picky with the images that I'm gonna move forward with and actually finally edit, just because I, I don't wanna put that much time into every single image if it's not gonna be a final image. Um, and then my process for this actually normally isn't on the computer. I print out my photos and generally look through them in person and flip over the ones I don't like until I have about five uh, to six images that are my picks and then I do it again for finals. But I can make a video about that if you guys want it. You just have to comment that down below and I can you know, give you more insight on my process with printing in my images and everything like that. Now I'm not gonna show you exactly what I'm doing uh, right now in Photoshop for final images, but if you guys want another video where I show you like my full process on editing my final images in Photoshop, uh, just comment down below, give this video a like, and I'll definitely do it. I just didn't wanna make a video that was more than like 15 minutes long because I'm not sure if people will watch that. Just comment down below if you guys want that. I'll show you how I use curve tones to get a lot better detail, a lot better exposure throughout your entire image. As you can see with this image right now, it's really bright. The shadows are really dark. From these exports and my picks, here are the final images versus the original scans. As you can see, I'm not trying to change a lot in my photos. I like how film looks. I don't wanna change the colors too much. I don't wanna change the exposure, the contrast too much. I just wanna make things look a lot clearer, a lot more you know, artistic in my own direction, in my own style. That's how I edit my 35 millimeter film scans. I hope you guys can take the things that you saw in this video a little bit farther and develop your own styles. I think that's about it.